A little bit, a little bit. Up high! Oh my goodness! He reached way back! Six seconds to go. Giselle pulls up. Missed it short. Follow is there! It's Krishan Christmas! Merry Christmas, man. All right, you guys. This is the first episode of the Straight Out of Whack podcast post season, off season. I don't know what we want to call it. I guess we'll just reference that. Uh, it's been a great March, and now we're into April. It's April Fool's Day, uh, but this episode is going to come out on April second, and we're going to have a two part Straight Out of Whack little marathon here. We may even have a third part, depending on how much we get through, because. This story, I don't know why I've waited till now to tell it. Maybe it's because the guy that I'm going to bring on decided to come back to the WAC after his team left the WAC last year. But uh, this is a story that dates back to the 2020-21 season. It is a wild one. And you're all, especially Aggie, New Mexico State Aggie fans, are going to want to tune into this. I hope I did this intro right because this is what I'm going to put out leading up to me posting this episode. But man, you're in for it. Like I said, it's going to be a two-parter. We're going to record tonight. This is Monday night, April Fool's Day. This is not an April Fool's podcast episode, by the way. This is going to be a true story and discussion about the craziness from the COVID, <clears throat> from the COVID year. So be sure to tune in. And then next week, Whenever he gets back from the Final Four, uh, we will record the second episode to cap off this. Like I said, there may be a three-part. We may get some other faces in here to talk about this craziness. But uh, Aggie fans, maybe Southern Utah fans, any WAC fans who know this story, uh, joining me now is Southern Utah assistant coach, former Aggie, Tennessee Owens. And, uh, man, buddy, I think we got a ton to talk about in this this, um... this Straight Whack wow. podcast episode. Oh yeah, I've never, I've never really had the chance to talk about this. So, you know, a lot, a lot of the people I get to talk about it with are people who experienced it. Or, um, but I know that there's, you know, the Aggie faithful. Uh, I mean, it, they're they're deep, and so they would. I mean, I'm, I figured at some point it was time to to talk about it. So he Tennessee brought it up to me when you got when Southern Utah was in Orem. Uh, what was that back in January? I think. And we're sitting there courtside, just chit chatting it up. It was the first time we'd seen each other. I, I think it's the first time we ever really like met officially in person. Yeah. And but we follow each other. He's played for New Mexico State. We've you know everything. And all of a sudden he comes up. Hey, we need to do a podcast episode on that 2020-21 New Mexico State season. I'm like, hello. Why haven't I done this before? Because yeah, like, no. I thought it was a good idea. I, it just seemed like, you know what? I've always wanted, like I said, I always wanted to talk about it and I've got no shame and, and, uh, and just, and asking to do it. So I was like, you know what? Let me talk to it about, uh, to, with somebody. So I just was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's, let's see what, uh, let's see what Kyle thinks about it. You know, the interesting part is we're recording on April fool's day. So people actually might think this is an April fool's like joke slash story. It's like, no, Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually coming. I'm coming back. So uh, I'm using my last two years of eligibility and I'm going to enter the transfer portal and see, just see what happens now. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, this is, this is all real here. It's going to be raw. There's gonna be a lot of things that probably people had no clue that happened um, over the course of that season. Cause it was crazy. If you don't know the story, we're going to get into details about this folks. If you, every, everybody should know the story by now. So 2020, all the conference tournaments are shut down. Going into the season, there was questions about how it was going to play out, what the schedule was going to look like, so forth and so on. In one state in the United States of America, an order was put down from the governor that teams could not play. Wait, I should say, was it all teams or was it just New Mexico State that couldn't practice or play in their own gym? Um, no, it was both. It was both. So, I mean, uh, New Mexico, um, the team up North, they actually ended up doing, they ended up doing the same thing we did, uh, after. And then for people that don't know, that's like rare New Mexico, the university of New Mexico is usually the first to act. 
with everything. So for us to actually do something first, that was like a little bit on the shocking side. Like people are like, oh, yeah, they're just they want to play. And I think and I'd be you know remiss if I didn't say like both programs were in very different spots. Right. Like we were I mean, we were everyone knew we were going to be really good and we had a chance to run the table. We just had won 19 straight games. We were 25 and six. I mean, I think we we're going to be a 12 or a 13 seed and we got the season taken away from us. So I think we were going to do whatever it took to, to play. And of course, um, the governor, Michelle Lujan Grisham, um, she decided that, you know, to set a precedent on on not allowing us to play. And of course, you can talk about it at, at nauseum on on opinions or whatever. And and I don't think you can on, in hindsight, like, I just don't really think you could fault anybody because you just never knew you didn't know what was going to come from the from the pandemic and the virus itself. So I don't fault anyone. Uh, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, I don't lose sleep over it. I lose sleep more over the fact that we were 25 and six in Vegas. And I was excited because we were playing Chicago state, no disrespect to them, but I was probably going to play in that game. And you know, I was, I was just, I was just trying to get some run, but um, uh, yeah. So like that, yeah, that's kind of what happened. So we actually, it was the whole state. Okay. So the whole state, not allowed to practice or play in your own gyms. Yep. Like, you couldn't was, play in the state. Yeah, you couldn't play in the state, right? Like it yeah, was, that was it was the thing. You could not play basically. in the state of New Mexico. That was yeah. the whole reason that this all became a thing to begin with. So what were the – so we'll start off there. So you get this ruling, whatever. And like you said, you can't fault the governor. It, it was kind of a drastic – we don't know what's going to happen with the COVID virus. We don't know. Now, you know, I'll take it from my side, like – I think it was absolutely crazy to shut everything down like that. Like, yeah, there's got to be things you could put in place, but they made a decision. It's over and done with. It's, it's hindsight. Like I said, that New Mexico State team might have been the best that you guys had coming back, you know, of the Jans era. Like, if we're being very, honest, yeah, could, it very well could have been. So, um, I just, so what was when you guys found out, what was the meeting like, or what was maybe the, the, what did Chris Jans or Mario Moch, what did they tell you guys in regard to that situation that like, hey, we're not going to be able to play here. we got to figure something out. Like, did they talk to you guys about that or was it just you guys you just know, got in the seat of your pants? I Honestly, uh, the staff did like a, I mean, a wildly impressive job at like keeping it in house with who it, who it needed to get to. And, and it's not to say that they were keeping it from us, but like that, we had no control. So there was no point in, in doing the what if and, and hypotheticals and hearsay stuff. But what's crazy, and I don't think a lot of people know this, we were, so we when we found out, we did a bunch of other things first to try to show the governor that we could play. So believe it or not, there is these family housing um, uh, complexes on New Mexico State's campus. They're really small houses. They're not very nice, but they're a perk for a college student. And in, in, crazy enough, every single player on the roster got their own house. And we tried that for like two weeks um, where we stayed there. We were essentially uh, trying, we're potting ourselves on the campus. Right. We tried to do that as a trial. Uh, no one, uh, Michelle uh, Lujan Grisham, the governor, did not tell us to do this. She, we didn't. She never told us that if we did this, it would. She would allow us to play. So we did this to kind of show. And then we did like two straight weeks with not a single uh, positive COVID test, and she still said no. So then that is when I think like in the afternoons after practice when we were, um, or I'm not, I guess not even practice. It was we weren't even practicing. We were doing the pod practices where we were like three or four at a time. Right. Right. Um, and Jan's you got to think like we're doing five on zero and then you bring in another group and do five on zero. And then you bring in another group and do defensive slides. It's crazy. It's crazy. It, um, so then after that, that's when the conversation really started to pick up. And I mean, I'm telling you, I remember it vividly cause it was, we were living in the, uh, in those houses, uh, during the election. So I remember it vividly and cause we were getting our meals together. And I just remember I was watching the election on my phone when my, dad had texted me saying, I just don't know if we're going to be able to do it. And then within like 24 to 48 hours, it was like, okay, yeah, we're going to Phoenix. And it was crazy. It was like, it was like, okay, everyone's packing. We didn't know really a whole lot of details. It was just like pack for, I mean, like you're going to be gone for a long time. We had no clue we we're going to be gone for the season. But once we found out, like we were staying at that resort, 
it was pretty clear cut that we were planning on being there until the end of March. So that was kind of that. And so, I mean, it happened really, really fast. So they did a good job of keeping everybody focused. Like Jans was wildly impressive. And so was Miller and the rest of the staff at just keeping the main thing, the main thing, the best you could. I mean, concerning the circumstances. So I got I got to go back to this. So the practices you were, there was there was able to be some workouts, but not with everybody there. Groups of five. Oh my gosh! Like that. yeah. Okay, here's the other question. During that time, if you remember, how often were you guys required to get like tested when you had to do that stuff? <laughs> And live together. And so uh, this is before you get to Arizona. Like, this is while you're mm -hmm. still in Texas, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what was Man. the kind of the protocol daily routine that you guys had to go through? Because I'm sure there was a daily routine that you had to stick to. It was crazy. It was crazy. Like, when it started to get into, like, the nitty-gritty of, like, sticking to a strict schedule, we were testing every day. And we were testing more than any other sport. Um, New Mexico State's fo uh, football program at the time was not where it is now. So, I mean, like, I, and I don't think that they didn't play that year. You know what I mean? They only played like two or three games, if I'm not mistaken. And I think they actually played them in the spring. And I think they played Tarleton, um, if I'm not, if I remember correctly. I but so. anyways, like they weren't in the, they we're in different spots. Yep. Um, everyone knows that the basketball program is, I mean, is very important to the community. And so people were trying to help us and, and give us avenues to make this work. So a normal day, we would get up like at eight or nine. We had to be, we had two groups. So you had to have, you had to be tested by 11 a.m. And you could only test if you had tested negative the day before. So you could show up to the, to, for the, to the facility to test again. And, you know, there's an incubation period. Um, so there's a three to five day incubation period. You, someone, so if someone could have tested positive on a Monday and have it, and test negative Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then test positive Friday. And then we're like, oh man, they could, we were practicing or doing the pod stuff. And everyone was like, you test, you get a positive test that pops. And then we got to, we have to disperse. So the amount of times th that we ended up not practicing because we found out there was a positive case. I mean, it was crazy. It was like walking on eggshells. It was, it was crazy. I mean, we had no clue if we were going to practice the following day. We had no clue how many. We're who gonna put be there. The testing in place? Like, who required that? Was it the school? Was it the state? Was it like? I think it was a little bit of both. I know Mario and the medical, like our athletic training staff, ended up doing a lot of the testing. So we had Mike Anderson, who was phenomenal. He was in a hazmat suit testing people every day, and it's crazy. <laughs> like, it just, and that was like when people were still not used to it. So like, it was miserable. They were we were doing it for like you know you go to a test site. They say it's going to be 10 seconds and they do it for two. It was the full 10 seconds all the way to the line on the testing swab. I mean, it's up in there. Oh, it's got to get like, up in there. Oh, and, and you got to like, we're doing everything we can. We're taking like every precaution. So, I mean, we're up in there at 10 seconds, each nostril. Whereas like you go, like I said, you go to the testing side, they're just, you know, boom. And then that's how you get negative tests. And then finally, um, once you would test negative, you could go to weights, you could do individuals, and then you could practice whenever we were allowed to practice. We followed all the rules, but I mean, the amount of like, even in the summer before all this was even a thing before in the summer, when we got there, um, when we didn't even know that not playing in the state of New Mexico was not a thing, was going to be a possibility. We were doing gym time, 40 minute blocks, of individual workouts, one person on each end of the, on each end of the floor on their own basket. You couldn't work out with anybody. And then eventually it was like, okay, now it's just one person in the gym at a time. So it was crazy. Um, but I mean, I'll never forget it. I was like in, in a small part of me was glad I got to experience that because it, you know, it, it, it makes you feel very grateful for just being to, uh, you know, being able to be part of something like that. Cause it was super special at the end of the day. Cause it, it developed, you created a bond for sure because you're gonna you're around them 24 7. yeah yeah i want to i want to go back just a little bit further so you guys learn that the WAC tournament you see all the tournaments getting canceled that year in 2020 then you learn the WAC tournament's canceled and like we said that was one of the best teams that you guys had they're probably going to the ncaa tournament you know was never a question yeah you learn that the tournament's canceled so your chance of playing the ncaa tournament gone you know, I mean, just like every other team in America, right? It wasn't just New Mexico State, but like, 
what's the mindset as you're sitting there in the team room or in the whatever room you guys were in just i mean that, that had to be pretty emotional in, in and of itself and yeah. I, I i've probably talked to other people about it but like now i guess i have to ask that because you're a player at that time and i want to yeah. know what was going on uh so uh it, when we were at the whack turn we would do everything in jans's suite um we had film there uh we would get food up there um and man it was i think i think it was about for everyone when everyone realized it probably wasn't gonna happen is when the nba season was canceled that was when everyone knew that the ncaa tournament getting canceled was right after and i think it was like an hour after i mean it was like at two o'clock i'm sitting in the room with uh with my, one of my with my roommate and we're like this it's coming we're not playing and then well, i think well, everyone I knew it. for you with that i'll i'll, I'll I got on the plane. I think it was on a Wednesday night. Okay. That was right as the Rudy Gobert press conference was. Oh, happening. when he was doing all the. <laughs> yeah. And then I get off the plane to everybody and all the notifications that like uh, these conference tournaments are closed or yeah. canceled. And it's like, what is happening? Yep. And then. Because the Ivy League did it first. Yeah. And then it just the trickled down. first. And remember, they had the women's tournament had a couple games that Wednesday night. We were at one of them. And one of the girls from CSU Bakersfield had been sick. Mm -hmm. So they stopped the game or they canceled the second game. Yep. We we're going to play it in the morning. And I was courtside standing next to Bill Hardy when Adam Young walked right by us and said, yeah, it's canceled. Yep. I remember yeah, so, it. Like, keep going. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're good. No, it's. I'm Please. telling you, there's so many things that will – that you, your mind brings you when you got, when you talk about this. Um, but anyways, yeah, we were in Jans' suite. That's where we did everything as a team. And I mean, you could hear a pin drop. We're just sitting in there in shock because, and I'll tell you what, like it's no knock on any other program in the country or in the WAC or whatever it was. But at the time, like, like you said, I mean, we just went 16 and 0. We're the first team and only team to ever do that. And for us, we knew like that was the team that was probably going to have the best chance to win an NCAA tournament game. And Jan said that in the meeting, he's like, I'll take this team over any of them over the Auburn team, over the Cle or the Auburn game, the Clemson game. And then obviously they did it after we left, uh, after I was gone against UConn. But like at that point he had, you know, he said, he's like this team, that was the best chance. But I mean, it was a, it was dark. It was dark and you know, depressing and disappointing. And, Man, we took that team photo, and I mean, no one wanted to take it. Like, no one wanted to have any part of that team photo. But I mean, I think it just shows that you know it's a testament to the culture of the program, and like that word gets thrown out left and right at you know new co new coaching hire press conferences or whatever it is. And uh, but, but it was real. Like it was real, and there were true bonds. Like I was best friends with with people I never thought I would be friends with, and and vice versa. Like I'm sure a lot of guys had no clue they would be as close as they were to me as the, you know, as they thought. And so that, I think that's why it hurts so much is because we all knew what that team was and where we were, where we were going. I mean, we were playing so well and we were so connected. We had just, I mean, whatever you want to call what we did to California Baptist, like, and, and that, and they're so, I mean, Rick Coy does, Coy does a hell of a job. Like, I mean, and they're, they were really well coached. We were just, that was our night. Um, so that we were just playing so well. And like it would just seem like no, we were on like at that point, it would have been really hard to beat us at, even in the NCAA tournament. So I mean it sucked. And then after that, like Vegas, I've never seen Vegas like that. Yep. I've never seen it like that. And I'm think I think I'm I'm 20 at the time. So I hadn't even turned 21 yet. So um man, we we had no clue what to do. It was crazy. So I mean, I've it was so empty. Um, but yeah, the team meeting, uh, it was dark and I'll, I'll never forget that because that was like a, a – it's just not something you can replicate for sure. Was that the same year – I'm looking over the schedule here that you – that 2019-20 season, if I remember right, that was the year that Jabari banked one in from three to beat Utah Valley in yep. – 84 82 is that the score oh yeah i was yep. so mad when he banked that in i was like Dude, the wolverines are getting their second win at the pan am center in like four years yeah like, yeah, yeah this is this up but you know the magic of the pan am center happens so What's, oh yeah that was it was what's funny is like 
you know, Jans use that as like fuel, as if we couldn't guard anybody because they score. We don't get 80 hung on us that much. And it's definitely right. not at home. And we got so much better in that week. We did, we only pra- we only practiced like three days, but they were gnarly practices. And I just remember he's, I could, cause now that I know Jans, like, uh, like how he is like in the office or whatever it is. And I can, I just know he's sitting in there. Like, like if you watch the Simpsons, like, uh, like Mr. Burns, just like with the evil smile, like, Oh yeah, we won, but they just scored 82 points on us. I'm going to use this for sure to say we can't guard a soul. And that's basically what it was. Cause I mean, like I said, we didn't, that would didn't happen to us often, but they were also really good. I mean, Mark Madsen is a, is a close friend of mine and my family's, and uh, he does a tremendous, like he's a really good coach and, you know, he had him ready to play. But like you said, the, the Pan Am is magical. There's something about that place that it's just so hard to win there. I think I'm looking at this schedule. And so during that 19 game winning streak, there were only two other teams that eclipsed 70 points. Yeah, CBD that sounds about did right. It and Kansas City did it. But Utah Valley was the only team that eclipsed 80 and they did it. Man. Gosh, that's just – it's crazy. And then then you guys – let's see, you hold UTRGB to 62, Grand Canyon 53, <laughs> Bakersfield to 46, and then CBU in that final reg- that final game of the 2020 season to 50 points. Oh, so, man. man. Yeah. And Cal, like I said, Cal Baptist can score. Yeah. Like he's always he's always had teams that could score. And let's be let's, – they're the they, – they punked us at their place in their first ever WAC game. Yep, they did. Yeah, so um, now, like I said, we were really good defensively. We were number one in defensive rebounding percentage that year in the country, or number two. So no one got offensive rebound. We were boxing out as if our life depended on it. It was crazy. And it, and then when I think about, it, I'm like, wow, people never went to the to the glass on us. It was crazy. The team was really good and full of great people and great coaches. Yeah, I mean, I I want to I'm gonna screen I'm gonna like share the screen here. So we can look at this roster oh, yeah, that they had in, in 2019-20. I'm going to pull it up here. And Aggie fans are just going to be sick at like what could have been that year. Oh, God. I'm sure this is going to be hard to look at, too. So, I mean, you had Sean Buchanan. There's Tennessee. Bad, look at that hair. Bad man. picture of me, man. Look at that hair. Terrell That's Brown. A bad picture. Oh, yeah. It's funny. Terrell Browns are, was was first team all whack in our leading. He had he averaged eleven points a game. Oh, <laughs> he was that good. Clayton, Jabari Stable. Rice, and that was the player. first year you had Evan Gilliard, the UTEP Not trend. a pro. AJ Harris. So you had dynamite point guards, right? Like yep. crazy impossible player. to stay in front of. Um, CJ Bobbitt. It's funny. Every each name is they're playing professionally. <laughs> Each it's name crazy. you look at, they're, they're playing professionally. Uh, Ivan Arikochea. I hope I said. I think I said that right. It, not the first name, but you got it. The last part. Ivan. 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 Yeah. Okay. Ivan Arikochea. Um, and then you had Trev back too. I mean, yep. look at this team. Will then, Fridge, you know, Big Will was at uh, Kansas State this year. Yep. There's Bryce. Mississippi State and Chris Jans' first yep. year. So. Johnny uh, McCann's Johnny a pro there, and Cotton, Sean uh, Williams, Rashawn Ag. Where was he? He was playing for somebody this year. He played, he played for Simon at Bowling Green. That's right. That's right. Yeah, he's in the portal now. Probably can't but get him now. This, look at this roster. Like, it's no wonder you guys won nineteen games in a row. Oh yeah. And you know that- what's funny? Uh, you know AJ didn't play the last uh, fifteen games of the season. That's crazy. He broke his hand at Cal Baptist. That's right. That's right. So, um, and that was it. I mean, we were just because I mean, let's we had a lot of injuries too, and I mean, so many. Clayton was hurt. Jabari was hurt. Uh, AJ got hurt. Wilfred tore his knee. Like, uh, I mean, everyone. Johnny was always hurt, but he still managed to play. <laughs> um, and it just shows like they he Jan's always got his guys able to you know to play. And that's and same with the staff. Like the scouting reports were. I mean, and we were – it was always to a T. So, the well, team was you really had, good. You guys had um, – uh, you know, you had Gilliard back. You had AG back. You had Clayton, Jabari Rice. Will McNair was back. Um, Johnny was back. So, you guys had yeah. pieces. 
back for the 2020 21 season like yeah we're gonna be really good (laughs) oh my gosh we're gonna be so good it makes you really sick because it's like what could have been in 2019 20 what could have been in 2020 21 and the tough thing is like we just will never know what could have happened because well there were the restrictions put in place so Oh, it's great. I mean, we still made it to the watch championship then. We'll get to that. We still made it to watch championship that you year. Did, and I we're not we'll talk about who you beat to get there. Um we could talk about it. We we could. We will. We will. <laughs> but let's get to the to the part where they I don't know. They, obviously they can't call you all together to sit in the same meeting room to tell you, hey, you could we have found a way to practice all together. Yeah. What was that was meeting? Crazy. Like? It was crazy. It was crazy. So we're sitting in there. So now you could. You had to be six six feet away from the person in front of you, behind you, and to the right or left. So we're sitting in the Barbara Hubbard room. Um, I don't know if you've been there. Have you been to the Barbara Hubbard room? It's at the Is top. Is that the one at the top, right? At the, yeah, pra- at the, top. At the practice yep. facility or like when you walk? The- yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I've we're been sitting in there. Room. And that's a big room. And the, and the room was barely big enough to fit everyone. That's where we ended up watching film because the film room – was too small um, as far as like the, the social distancing. And uh, he's like, we're, we're going to Arizona. We're staying at this resort. And then of course, Jan's is like, now this is not a vacation, you know, and, his, and uh, that's, that's, it was his first thing. And it was so funny. Like, <laughs> and then he's like, now, uh, and cause it had like a water park and everything. He yeah. only let us do the water park one time and then, and then never again, uh, which I mean, I don't blame him. But uh, so then he's like, you guys need to pack tonight because we're leaving tomorrow. It was that fast. It was like a 4 p.m. meeting or afternoon meeting. We didn't practice that day, I don't think. Um, and then we packed our stuff. I had two suitcases. We got on the bus and we drove down. We drove over to to to, uh, to Phoenix and stayed at the Arizona Grand. Just a beautiful place. Um, when Arizona I tell you, it, it was really fun for like the first two weeks. Yeah, I mean, you guys were there for five weeks. Like, what was it? What was it like? I, I know oh, yeah, guys, way longer than that. It, it says, well, it might have been long. Was it longer? Oh yeah, we were there for like two and a half months. There you go. We didn't come I'm back. I'm just reading like the, the news January. report out of you know that the Mexico State Aggies were because, like you no. said, it's still, it feels like it's so long ago, but it was like three years ago. It's October, crazy. It was the middle of October, if I'm not mistaken. Mistake late or late October. Or something like that. It was, but I mean, it was like November, December. I mean, it was like all. It was, I think it was three months, and um, it was very clear that we were going to be there the whole season. And uh, we couldn't find games. We couldn't find anybody to play us. We didn't find anybody. To, we played at the facility, which is an AAU program. Yeah. And um, but yeah, the, I mean, the place itself was really cool. I, I, we ne- no one ever really got to under to find out kind of how it was set up. So we kind of had our own pod. Um. And then the assist, some of the assistant coaches and Jans stayed in a different part of the hotel because it was still open for business. Right, right. Like the people were there. So this the notion that it was like a bubble, that's that was false. Like right. people, we would see people every day that were coming to travel because at Arizona, the, the restrictions were pretty loose. Right. You know, masks weren't completely forced at the time, but um you know, in Did Arizona, you have that restrictions is. on where you could go when you, you were at yeah, the resort. Yes, you couldn't. So you after the first day when we went to the water park, I'm pretty sure we had a positive case like the next day. So <laughs> Jan shut that down, rightfully so. And then yeah. after that, you couldn't go to the water park. You had to basically just say like, "Hey, man, unless you like are at the 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 banquet hall, the ballroom with the floor in it, or." in the weight room, which is actually a really, really cool weight room for a, for a hotel or like the team room for food. Like you're not going anywhere. Like, and so that, so like we just kicked it in our room and then we would cycle through who had their own rooms. So they were set up to where their back room had two beds with a door. And then the front room had a massive couch that ended up being a king size bed. So then most, I mean, naturally everyone just kind of one person would take the back room with the bed with the two beds and just sleep on one of them. The other person would take the front room and then the people would just close the door just so they can have some peace from the other person. Right. And then like every two or three weeks or after the first month or so, 
people started getting their own rooms and then it was everybody. It wasn't like seniority, um, you know, points per game. It was basically just making sure, uh, you know, a lot of it was based on who could get it again. So you would put a guy who just had COVID with someone who had not gotten it yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then, and then eventually it turned into like, okay, who are the guys that are going to play? And then those guys ended up getting the rooms. So, but then you also have to understand that when you break the, like the immunity, uh, like the, where you're uh, immune to it, then you would get the single room. Uh, it was a, it was a whole ordeal. It was crazy. You didn't know, like you, you were living out of the suitcase. It was crazy. Luckily, like I got pretty lucky. I was in the same room. I was only in two separate rooms. I was in one room with Bryce and then another um, by myself because of just the COVID and who could get it. I, I couldn't even, it's crazy. How, how are the practices? Did you guys, were you guys able to practice as a team or is it still split up? So there we practice as a team. And okay. then that the masks, you didn't have to wear the mask. Some people still did. And during, I mean, we were playing with the masks on, um, even in Las Cruces. And then finally, and I was all for like doing everything the right way. And then once, as soon as we got to Arizona, I could, I was, I took it off. Yeah. I took off the mask. So, and we, and most, most people ended up doing that. And that's how we pray. We did normal practice. So normal practice, Jans, the whole staff was there and you know, that's how we did it. That's you when know, we went day to day. Um, and that's how we kind of figured out a way to have some normalcy. What was it like not not knowing if you were going to have a game at some point, like or where or who you would play? Like, what was that like? Just and doing it on the fly too. Like, it wasn't like those games that you played in Arizona in that AAU gym were like on the schedule. They were just thrown yep. together to get you yep. guys games. Like, what is that like? It was when you're going through that. Yeah, uh, Miller was on the phone 24-7. <laughs> you know, recruiting was – I'm sure they were doing that too now, because now that I have gotten into this side of the business, you're never going to not do that. But, yeah. like, he was on the phone 24-7 talking, like, how many how many positive cases do you have? And then the next coach, you guys got any positives? Have any positives for you guys? Can you guys play? We'll pay you uh, – I'm sure at some point, like, with buy games, like, I'm sure they were offering people – you know, here's 10 grand to come play us at the facility. And then we did the craziest thing I've ever heard of. And we went to a nationally ranked powerhouse NAIA and played them at their place. And it was the craziest thing ever. Like, and we almost lost. <laughs> we had to pull out, we had to pull the game out. And like, it was, I mean, we're on the road for our first game up. I mean, a powerhouse perennial mid-major. Everyone knows who you are playing at Arizona uh, Christian, I think it is. Yep. And they're one of the best NAIs in the country. They could beat probably 15 or 20 Division One schools, if not more. Like, they could compete in the Southland. <laughs> and they, we all were at their place, and they had like 50 fans in there, and they play in this little field house. It got pretty loud. And uh, we, almost, we almost lost the game. And then after that, I don't think we played for like a month. So it was hard. Oh. I mean, you had yeah. to, you had to fight it mentally to know, like, okay, here's our fifteenth practice without a game, and you don't know when the next game is, and that was, and that was, a, that was a very hard thing to fight through. I mean, that's some real adversity there when you know there's no games in sight because even in the summer and the fall, you know that eventually November will come, not like this. So it was crazy. It was a hard mental thing. So let's break this down here. So like you said, you played Arizona Christian and you won by six. You played Benedict Benedictine Mesa. Yeah. Two nights later and okay. beat them by 38. Yeah, I played in that game. <laughs> and then <laughs> here it is. That was December 1st. December 5th at Santa Clara was canceled due to COVID. Yep. December then- 7th. Because you guys went to California – expecting to play and then i think if i remember right someone in it at santa clara had a positive or was it new mexico state us yeah so it's just, so you go out there and you're thinking you're gonna play two games and then boom it's all of a sudden taken from you and then you're back to phoenix you want to know how we got back we bust 17 hours <laughs> oh my gosh and it was so funny, and I and it didn't hurt my feelings at all. But like, 
you still had to get the COVID positive dude back. So then it was like, okay, 10 Bryce, you guys are going to be on the bus, but he's going to be in the back. And then all the guys who like were not, who were going to play were on another, but it was totally warranted. Yeah. Like, it was warranted. Like we're like, okay, we got to make sure that we can still get the season to make sure yeah. that all this money that we're spending to make sure we have this season makes sense. So of course, like you're going to throw Jabari and Clayton and all those guys on the other bus. So then me and like the athletic trainer, and uh, I think my dad was on the bus uh, and Bryce and some of the lower minute guys, we all were like in the bus. And then like eight rows back is the player who, who tested positive. Oh my God. Um, and so we bust 16 hours back from Santa Clara, um, which is like way up there. Right. Um, all the way back to Phoenix. And then I don't think we played for like ever after that. Yeah. So, so you're supposed to play Arizona that got canceled. And then December 28th, you got, so the end of December, you guys got two games. Technically you were supposed to have four games in California again. Yeah. You played Cal state Northridge lost by three. I can't. Uh, yeah. And then Santa Clara, you were supposed to play in Ontario that, that same weekend yep. or that same week. But that got canceled because I think they had COVID. That was when they got it. Yeah. And then UC Riverside, you had a doubleheader with them right before WAC play was supposed to start. And that got canceled. <laughs> like, what, what? I don't even know what to think right now if I'm in your guys' shoes. And I know it went for a lot of teams where they didn't know if they're going to play that weekend or whatnot. But like, you guys are one, you're in Arizona away from home for like, two and a half three months almost then you're going on the road on these bus trips and it's just like the funniest thing is when we flew, when we flew <laughs> it was the craziest idea we would the players would walk like penguin style with the coaches hovering around them <laughs> <laughs> it was like the wildest stuff ever we were doing whatever we we're pulling out every trick in the bag to try and not get COVID because we've at, it got to the point where we're sitting and like obviously this is right before we ended up coming back to New Mexico uh, to New Mexico like Jans was like like I don't what do you guys want to do like we can persevere through this and and figure out a way to make this work or we cannot and that was like a you know a tactic a ploy to to get guys to just stay with it and you know I'm very proud of like the fact that we were still able to do what we were able to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, we tried everything. It was a really hard dynamic to to process and navigate when you're away from your families and your friends and your normal routine and living in a hotel room. Because it's like, it wasn't sweet. It wasn't just fun. It wasn't fun. Like, it, it was fun for like a, the first week. You're like, oh, this is cool. This is like the NBA bubble. And then you're like, okay. Right now, and because you didn't know till we, the you know, the day before we found out, like, we're going to be here till March. So yeah. It's, I mean, it was hard. It was really hard, especially when you're not playing for a, a month and 25 days and 19, you know, it's crazy. You know what, guys? We're going to end the first episode of this crazy, wild story right now on that note because we're going to get into the whack schedule and how wild that was. <laughs> I mean, just think about it, guys. First off, they can't fully practice in the offseason because of the ruling by the by the governor. And it was warranted a little bit, I guess we'll say. We'll 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 not go down that you know rabbit hole. But then to play what three three games in two months time heading into whack play. Uh it's just wild, guys. And you've heard the stories of the travel through airports and how it was like a super protective penguin style waddle through the airport. And they still got COVID even when being out and about uh, together as a team, in a sense. Crazy stuff. We're going to get to episode two next week after the final four. Oh, Tennessee, this is awesome. Like, it's so great. Crazy year. And uh, everybody, be sure to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button and the notification for the second episode so you can hear the kind of the final thoughts on this crazy season and who they beat to get to the WAC tournament championship game. We'll, 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 we'll discuss that later. I'm still bitter over it, but uh, <laughs> anyways, Tennessee, enjoy the final four. And uh, well, thanks, we will talk to you on the next episode where we continue this 
crazy story that I should have done this a long time ago. Podcast. I had, to, I had to remind you, Kyle. You know what? It's so good. You're back in the whack, and uh, we're gonna have some fun, some more fun with it. Oh yeah. Thanks for listening to the Straight Out of Whack podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other podcasting platforms. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Remember to follow us on Twitter at Whack Hoops Digest and Facebook under Whack Hoops Digest for all your Whack Hoops news and information.